some exciting news for India in the space race and a big coup for the country's space program, making history, becoming the very first nation to successfully land a rover on the south pole of the moon. Moon lander operated by India's space agency touching down on the moon's south polar region about 8.30 this morning. The successful mission comes just days after a major embarrassment for Russia. And a Russian spacecraft tried but failed to do the same thing. It crashed right into the moon's surface. The Indian mission, designed to conduct a series of tests on the moon, including testing for mineral and seismic activity, our science and technology correspondent Dan Riskin is standing by with more on the significance of this. Dan, good to see you. What do you think? I'm, I'm psyched. Uh, this is great. It's the first country from the Global South to... Uh... To, to do something like this, they've landed close to the South Pole, and uh, and it's it's really a it's a big deal. So um, you know, there's there's two ways to look at it. One is it's a great success for India uh, after their uh, failed attempt in 2019. But the other piece of it is that it's it's egg on the face of Russia. Russia crashed uh, just this last Friday, uh, trying to do basically the same thing. And Russia, of course, is supposed to be you know one of the big players, and India is an up and comer. And so this really does point to a shift in uh, where the power is in terms of the space race, at least, but also in just in terms of geopolitically here on Earth. The other thing I'm curious about is is what India's aims are here. You know, the so-called space race. We know the Japanese, uh, India, Russia, China, the United States, so some Arab countries as well have all tried to do this or successfully done this. What's what's the end goal here, do you think? Yeah, right now we've got uh, rovers on 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 the moon right now from China and from India, and uh, that might have been hard to believe in the 1980s when it was uh, the U.S. and and the USSR that were that were going toe to toe on this stuff, and so things really have shifted. Um, but yeah, landing on the moon is very hard. India did fail in 2019. Israel uh, failed in 2019. Uh, this year we saw Japan fail. Um, we've seen Russia fail. There, there's just it, the the surface of the moon is littered with failed attempts. But as we get better at this, and hopefully we're very good at it by the time we try to put human beings on there uh, as early as 2025 in the U.S. and Canadian mission that's going there. Um, as we do this, it's not just about touching the moon and waving back home. There there are real conversations about the minerals that are on the moon and how those might be used to to sustain long-term missions and so the south pole which is where this uh this indian uh, lander has landed it's about 600 kilometers from the pole itself um that's a very special place because it stays dark there and so uh, ice water ice has accumulated around the south pole and water ice is of course made from h2o hydrogen and oxygen which is stuff you can breathe stuff you can make rocket fuel out of stuff you can water your crops with and so if we want to set up long-term bases a place that has ice nearby is of special relevance so the fact that india got there before the us before china uh before russia uh although russia tried to beat them by a couple days um this is uh this is a really big deal and really signals a shift in in how we think about the moon it's not just a big monolith now uh it or regolith mono regolith uh it is uh, a place with a lot of different features that are of different importance to different countries yeah and i know a lot of people are you know sort of saying well the russians got their just desserts certainly given what they've done in ukraine with this huge failure for russia's space program Here's a question for you, though. I mean, the Americans landed on the moon, Dan, 54 years ago. So how big of a deal is this? You talked about how difficult it is. And I'm sure it's very difficult. I, I mean, I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. But we're talking about technology the Americans had back in 1969. Here we are in 2023. So, I mean, relatively speaking, why is this such a big deal? You know, humanity did this 50 plus years ago. I think the quick answer is Mars. Uh, all the technologies that go into landing successfully on the moon and driving around and getting back in your ship and going back home, all of those technologies are going to work on Mars. Uh, Mars is harder because it's farther, uh, but you can test different ideas and different technologies on the moon. And moon is a, a hotbed for, for research. It's like a practice Mars as we try to go farther. And, and the other thing is, yeah, we went there in the 60s, but you have more calculating power in your wristwatch than they had in all of the Apollo spacecraft put together. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we we, it is a different technology going there. The task is the same, but what's being accomplished now, the, the images that are coming back, the fact that a robot, a Chinese robot can drive around, pick up samples, get back in the spaceship and go back home and deliver them to China, uh, which happened recently. Um, these are the kinds of things that uh, we couldn't do with robots in the 60s. So it may on the surface seem like a blast from the past, but this is very much about the future.
Everything old is new again. Dan Riskin, mm -hmm. our science and technology correspondent. Hey, good to see you, my friend. Talk soon. Thanks so much.